so that you can also. Hello, good day to everyone following us online. This is AI Every Day Introduction um, to the whole class, and this is the data analysis cohort. Um, if you are not supposed to be here, please, um, well, you're welcome, but um, just notifying everyone that this is data analysis. Um, this year, you begin your journey to being a data analyst. So it all starts with a simple um, class like this. And I keep seeing new faces, and faces, old faces. Um, you are very much welcome. So we'll be starting right away. Um, I'm just going to shortly be introducing you to who we are, Data Scientist Network, as well as what the class will entail, what you need to do. I have to, um, you know, so that everybody is on the same page. Over the next few days and weeks, more people will be joining us um, here, especially physically, I'm sure. And uh, I'm sure that at the end of this trip, you'll be able to say that you are a data analyst. Awesome. So, as you must know, we are here at Data Scientist Network. We are Africa's largest AI learning ecosystem. And we have a commitment to raising 1 million AI talents in 10 years. And beyond that, also working to provide solutions that improve the quality of the lives of 2 billion people in emerging markets. So, if you're very familiar with DSL, you know that previously we have just focused on okay, 1 million AI talents. But now we have um, it's our fifth anniversary where we transitioned into now product delivery, where we are building products with artificial intelligence to actually improve the quality of lives. And this review for us will be delivering on three core areas that is our community for learning and research, which is part of what we are doing here. We are learning and then product development, like I mentioned, for social impact and then partnerships for social delivery. Yeah, so a lot of partnerships. So over the years, we have evolved from just learning and community to research and social good applications, corporate support and social deployment, so many um, trainings for organizations and government, and startups and venture support as well. And this was in 2019, where our founder, Dr. Dolubaya Dikombi, won the Mathai Impact Award and the Deep Learning in Daba in 2019. And this was a huge win for us because it was very recognized as of 2019 as the number one AI learning community and solution delivery network in Africa. Think learning that one you know, comes up in another few months and really is just amazing. It's the biggest um, gathering of AI experts in Africa, from academia to industry and all across like that. So it was also here that we are in the second uh, the best poster right now um, at the same conference. Also we were the winner of the best poster award. At the 21st edition of the Global Economic and Competition Conference. This always blows my mind because of the fact that we're a non academic institution, and this is the world leading uh, conference for economics and competition, where we had a people to share trust, to end poverty, and people with financial inclusion. the best poster amongst all the academic institutions we had, there are so many larger institutions. So this does goes to show that um, we know what we are doing, and we are growing Nigeria to become a light of AI in the world. We're also the only African finance in the express of the Germany was the express competition. It was a big um, competition. We had people like Elon Musk even uh, sponsoring that competition. And that was in 2021 during the COVID pandemic, where we actually emerged only African finance in the world for that competition. Our work has also been recognized at top AI conferences across the world, triple AI, NeurIPS, NeurIPS is the largest body for beautiful information and NeurIPS is neural um, information processing system um, and it's the largest AI gathering in the world where all the bodies are. Every year it's NeurIPS. NeurIPS is like the highest AI body for conferences, right? And we've had our work presented at different workshops at NeurIPS. At AAAI, our founder gave the keynotes and so many, so many other um, interesting um, awards like that. And um, this one is really dear to our heart, where we released the first artificial intelligence and Python book for elementary students and beginners in Africa. And this one, I say, is so dear to our heart because of the fact that if we are going to truly build one million AI talents and we are going to ensure that the AI revolution has kids, you know, we also have to build from the ground up. So we have to find a way to introduce kids and teens to artificial intelligence at a very young age. So this book is available for purchase online. And physically here as well. This is our new research um, 
lab and facility where we hold all our trainings. You are currently here, right? Um, unless you are here, you are not here. In metaverse, who knows? Or in the matrix. But um, this is where we do everything stems out from here, um, impacting the world. And really, I like I said, it's really exciting to have you here because the dream really is that gathered here today, and that's one of the reasons why you observe that you know I met like to take all the pictures because it's really beautiful after maybe two years, one year, six months, someone comes and shows you and says, um, the next AI unicorn, I actually started my journey here. And that's the goal that we have many AI dreams can start here. Can flourish here and can grow here. So this is a hope. You are welcome any day. Come around to learn on this Wednesday. And um, this place is always cool. We also had two of our products that were initiated, conceptualized, and developed by us, selected in the 2021 Top 100 AI products by UNESCO. Wow! Two of our products, not just one, two were actually selected as the top products. And we had our EdTech AI adaptive learning engine, which uses artificial intelligence to change and also suit learning to students across Nigeria, delivered to about 1 million students in Nigeria during the COVID pandemic. It was our learn at home, and rather than just leveraging on, okay, online teaching, what are the students that don't have access to the internet? How can they learn? Because schools are shut down, so they cannot be dropped out of learning. So we had our EdTech Adaptive Learning Engine that works with SMS to deliver learning to them. Also, we have Prescribe Right, which is an AI-powered optical character recognition system, Learning a lot of these things, right? Today, we introduce a lot of this concept of AI um, and data. Okay, so let's move on. Um, our dual business model here, so global impact, talks about how we are moving into all these fields. So, you've seen a lot of us in career tech, fintech, retail, ed tech, platform, and health as well. We also, like I mentioned, transition to begin to incubate AI startups. So, we are building an artificial intelligence product. We incubate startups here as part of our AI startup program. And these are the first school of our startups, and I can tell you that they are all doing amazing things today. We are supported by a world-class advisory board, headed by Dr. Lee Stewart, as well as many other top people in artificial intelligence and governance and AI in the world. So you are in for an amazing ride with us, and the only thing I can just say is buckle in and um, get yourself excited for an amazing learning experience, okay? Are we still together? Cool. So the classrooms, classrooms are really simple. Um, this just go to cover how the classroom run and so on. So there are just about four key things, right? Um, COVID-19 preventive measures, um, compliance is mandatory here for physical activities. I said a lot of us have been without our nose masks, but it's actually promoting if you're attending physically. If you're online, of course, you don't um, need to do that. But if you're attending physically, um, my colleagues would speak to that shortly. And also, um, because we are having online learning and there are a lot of platforms that we run here, all participants are required to maintain the optimum, maximum, utmost respect for everyone in all interactions throughout the program and on the program on all platforms. Please be uh, highly respectful. I'm sure that to uh, register for this program, we all register for the DSNEI plus membership, right? Anybody here, let me put this can. Anybody here that doesn't have it, it's not a DSN year plus member because it's really important. But there's a code of conduct that we must have read to. Or we just keep to the end and sign up. Which, which was it? We just, I accept the terms of conditions. Even when it takes an arm and a leg, I accept the terms of conditions. Right? Okay, but um, you can just go by to make sure that you read the community code of conduct. It's really important. Respect is a very um, huge thing for us here at DSN. So you get to fire the fire that are on the left and on the right. Please ensure you're using them exit in an orderly fashion. And most important, and this is really, really, I have to come on this, is attendance at live sessions is compulsory, right? Because it's AI every day, which means learning goes on every day. So every day you're going to be able to access content on Google Classroom, um, as well as other content that you need for this class, okay? Because class is twice a week, right? And then for the next week, you are not supposed to go and sleep or just go and chill. Yes, chill, but um, there's learning that must continue every day. So you need to access the classroom and the live session attendance is super important because here, you know, we take questions from people online. We're going to also talk and collaborate. So super important. Now, how exactly do you participate in this cohort of area? Now, the other cohort business analytics also has a Google Classroom and they have their own rules, which I believe one must have gone through. 
for this course for data analysis is as um it's basically the same thing i'm just going to go over to make sure that everybody's on the same thing especially people following online as well so i'm going to give, give a little time after i am done to take your questions as well so number one is joining the live sessions super important you have to join the live, live sessions of course we have recordings in the classroom we can follow through so here in the live session you can ask questions you know Yes, you can ask questions in the classroom, but also we we'll cover things and we few things that will also, you know, someone asks a question and um, the tutor decides to you know, expatiate on something else. It's really important. Also, the Google Classroom. The Google Classroom is not optional. It's not an add-on to the course. It's where the learning happens. It's, it's the learning management system for this entire course. So it's absolutely compulsory to join the Google Classroom. So quick, by a show of hands, who is not, not on the Google Classroom already? your hand you have not joined the Google classroom e. one two three four okay but confirm you saw the email to join the Google classroom you did not receive the email to join the Google classroom unless you have okay so if you register for this class immediately you register it's automated so you receive that email the email subject if i remember correctly is welcome to AI every day data analytics travel learning begins or something like that just search it, you know, welcome to AI every day. This is super important because that's where the quiz, the daily assessment for this class will be posted. That's where the additional content will be posted. That's where the notebooks that we use will be posted. That's where the data sets we use will be posted. Right? So communication, we get very little email communications, and most of the share will be on the Google Classroom. So just go through your email and make sure that you um, join the classroom. The third is you have to complete the content on the Google Classroom recommended time. That is, before the next week, usually we share some content to read up or watch, usually watch before the class to ensure that um, we can maximize one hour 30 minutes of our live sessions and your questions can, you know, if you ask questions, there's a way that we can use that to um, focus for the class. So it's super important. There's a lot of your feedback that will impact the class. So it's super important that you are there in the classroom uh, giving your feedback and completing the content. Also, assessment. And I'm going to get to the end of why I'm going through all of this now because um, for this course as well as um, other courses, there would be um, a badge of completion that is a mini, I call it like a mini certificate that you have completed this course and then we're certifying that yes, you have completed this track. So you need to complete your assessment, you're going to get to the criteria very soon. And also, um, I cannot say this enough, you are seated amongst the Maybe the next AI unicorn. I said it could come from this class. So please network. Okay, let's help one another. Let's learn from one another. There's something we see here at DSM that as an AI plus member, we have the AI plus genotype. I wish I were my AI plus. And it's that everyone is, as a DSM member, you have the AI plus genotype. And what does it mean? It means you are a universal donor and a universal recipient of AI knowledge. That means you are always learning and always ready to give out AI knowledge. It's something that we, we believe because if this learning must cascade, we must all take it for one another. Like everywhere I am, who can I teach here? Who wants to learn here? Can I learn more? What am I learning today? It's the first way if, if Nigeria is going to become um, the unicorn of AI that we want it to become, we need to be on the cutting edge. So network, learn from other people, ask questions. Hey, what do you do? How are you doing? Can you help me with this? And all of us are here to support, all right? Are we still together? Awesome. All right. So using the Google Classroom is super simple. Once you log into the platform, either mobile or on your desktop or your laptop, you will be able to see this kind of a platform. And once you click Classroom, Classroom tab will open up into this that you see on the extreme right, where you can access all the learning content. And on the stream is where you can talk, you know, you can post, ask questions and all the other things that um, we might need to, all other interactions with really you can happen on the stream, okay? Let me see, you're welcome, okay, hi, awesome. Um, time time will be on the assessment. Yes, the time time will be still on the assessment, and I'll explain that shortly. Can you send them to Google Classroom? So um, I cannot send it to you uh, individually, unless we can send an email requesting it, but that's why I didn't have to ask that question. But what I'll say is once you search your email, if you have reached out on this class, you must have gotten it. If the email you entered into the form was correct, you must have gotten it. So please just search to the email request on that email and we should be sure to get it. All right, so three things real quick. 
And that's why I said that this um, onboard decision to be part of program is really important. Um, in this class, you're going to have a class ID that you use for all your quiz, all your quizzes, all your attendance, which we will get to show you. Um, the class ID looks somewhat like this. If you check in the classroom, you will see um, a link to all the names and class IDs. And there's an attendance, right, that also is like this, that you need to fill in for all the live sessions. We'll get to why it's important shortly. And also the assessment, right? The assessment will take your student's ID. So for every assessment that you do, this is this video here, you need to check your student ID, right? It's really short, it's all data analysis, and then there's a number, right? Um, for it, so the names and alphabet score that if you register, you get your student ID almost immediately, just refresh the page, and you'll be able to get that, right? So, um, if you have not filled, I don't think any of us here have filled the attendance for this class. So please, you can just really simple. You can just point your phone at the screen, scan this QR code um, to get the link to the attendance. It's super important that you do that. And to also do that, you need to, or you just use the link, https bit.lyc2 all caps AIE underscore attendance, right? As for to AI everyday underscore attendance. So, and to get your class ID that you need to fill the attendance, just go to the records, scroll down to your name, and you'll find your um class id then so by that please make sure you do this right away it's also on the record is on the classroom you can access it from there all right okay so i'm gonna exit this in another one minute have you all have you all got this are you good all right so yes i should do this super important as well ensure you fill your class ID as accurately as possible, right? Because it's unique to everyone. So if you make a mistake on your class ID, you see that the form is not collecting any other video apart from your class ID, right? And you, and that's because your class ID is mapping to your email address, it's mapping to all your details. So if your class ID is wrong, it's going to be impossible to assign your scores or your attendance. So please make sure you fill that as accurately as possible. Let me send the link here. Oh, yes, sure. Um, okay, send the link. Just give me. So, make sure I find. Okay. Alright, so I just want to give you the link so people following online. Alright. So this is the records and link to attendance. Um, I know that I will not always be able to send it to the chat, but uh, how can you scan the app? Yeah, you can just use any QR code scanning app. I've sent the link to the class to the chat. So if someone asks for the link again in the chat, anyone can just drop it for them. You can just copy this one and keep it for them so they can um, access that. So every live session you will have to sign this attendance. Um, and for every quiz that you'll be taking in this class. You will need to, there will be eight sets of quizzes, you will need to use your um, class ID to fill them out. So, lastly, is the program certification. So, like I said, yes, there will be a certification for this program, and we have a certification platform where all our certificates or our badges or certificates for this program is a badge, really. Um, you can verify them on the platform. So, that will also be complicated. And the criteria is you have to complete all the assessments for the training. For with at least an average of eighty percent. I mean, you have to know what's been done so you can say that yes, you have completed the class. So all assessments must be completed with at least. So you can please feel free to get one hundred percent of an average. Feel free to get ninety percent, ninety five. They are really simple, and they are just to test that. Oh yes, you did um, go through the class, and you need to understand the concepts taught. Then also at least six out of the eight live sessions must be attended. So we understand that yes, you have so many commitments. So at least six out of the live sessions will be attended. That means you must either attend online or on site. All right. And then for people that meet this criteria, there'll be a verifiable badge of completion for them. Okay. Now, today's session is not a technical session. Also, I should state that all sessions are being recorded and the recordings will also be shared in the classroom as well as on YouTube. There's a people watching this class on YouTube right now. So um, you can always, after the class, go 
go over what has been taught because I understand that we, it's actually really, really like mm -hmm. answering these questions. Mm -hmm. So we'll have technical sessions, and technical sessions will begin from next week. Technical sessions are um, like the name implies they are more technical, they will involve you, and all the sessions like um, are hands on. That means you must have your laptop, you must type, you will type in, you will, we will give you access to Wi Fi next week so that you can also um, use Google Cola for most of our in class exercises. Um, there are two ways you can run this for the technical sessions we're using Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab or Anaconda. And why is because most of the platforms we're using um, are already installed once you install Anaconda. Or if you are very comfortable working online, you can use Google Cola. So it's one of the two. Either you use Anaconda, Jupyter Notebook, or you use Google Cola. Or you use both, right? And I would recommend if your laptop uh, maybe is um maybe very low RAM or might com very low compute power. You might want to use Google Cola, which is cloud-based, so that you don't uh, maybe run it out of system resources. So um what are the advantages of each? So for Anaconda you can book it does not require an internet connection and for Google Cola it requires an internet connection. Um, Anaconda requires you to install it on your device and Google Cola does not require that. So if you go through the introduction class um, or section on Google Classroom, you'll find resources to all these things, how to use and how to them, how to um, use your Google Cool app. You can go over that today. I had a tomorrow's class, which will be a technical session for Python program. All right? Great. Also, um, there are a few dependency issues you might have with Anaconda, and for Google Cool app, you have less. So you can see the classroom for all the details on both of them. Please ensure that you do go through over them Ask questions if you need to, and we will be able to answer your questions. So, um, that's all from my end. I will certainly introduce us to our facilitator, but then I want to assume that we've been sitting for a while. So, I think we should just do a little bit of exercise for you. Is that fine? Is that fine? Even if it says not fine, it's fine. I'm kidding. All right, please rise up on your feet. All right. Have you done the stand up? Yeah, if you're putting us online, we've been sitting for a while. Stand up to. Yeah, let's not yeah, just walk, walk around the bit, walk around the bit. Walk to someone and have, ask the person what they know about artificial intelligence, how they do it. Um, what are you here to learn? What are you doing? People online, you can share your comments. People online, you can share your comments. That's what people online are saying. Uh, let me see people online. We are following great, great, great. That's really nice. Nice. Good. I, wow, nice. Let's see. People are super. People are super. Okay. Nobody will bother. They will talk to the world. It's fine. Don't worry. It's okay. No, no, no. It's okay. It's, it's really fine. It's fine. It's okay. 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 Okay, so let's still seriously discuss. Oh, carry on, carry on, carry on to the network and carry on, carry on. All right, if you have our seats, if you are putting us online, okay, please do have your seats. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, that's a nice stretch. Very good. All right, so are you ready to kick off? All right, so let's meet our facilitator for today. I am really excited to introduce um, Bimili K. Olirude, who is our facilitator. He's a machine learning engineer and a project analyst here at Data Sciences Network. He's a machine learning researcher here at DSN, specializing in computer vision. So he works with um, a lot of you know, neural networks, um, convoluted neural networks and all the like to see how we can teach machines to be able to use sight cameras, understand vision and be able to apply that to different things. He's really an expert. I've had the privilege to work with him 
on um, a computer vision project before. Um, really amazing, and also the impact of capacity on AI models. While at university, he held a, he had a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and was actively involved in building tech communities within the campus. So you can rest assured that your experience engagement them will be amazing. He's also looking to contribute to projects that aim at using artificial intelligence to improve the quality of life in general. He spends part of his time teaching students on how AI can help create a better reality, and this is one of such engagement. So please join me to welcome Bill Lincoln in the day as he so deaf and amazing takes us in a deep dive into the world of artificial intelligence and data. Thank you very much. Hello. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Okay. Yeah, my name is Pemile Kionilbi. Uh, I'll be your tutor for today. And I'll just be introducing to what artificial intelligence is. And then maybe at the end of the day, if we still have time, we can do a basic introduction to uh, some of the technologies you'll be using and some of the skills you'll be acquiring during the school. Is that cool? Okay. Nice. So uh, before we start, just like a quick move up. Uh, so how many of you, this is your first time with this, eh? Can I say hands? Oh, wow. Almost everyone. That's nice. Okay. Is this the first time you're hearing about DSN? Can you tell me your, like your DSN story? How did you hear about DSN? How did you hear about maybe our programs or anything? You want to go just study your name and then just Yes, my name is Bruno. So, uh, I, I, so you know, I, I typed data science on Google and then the website came up and then I was like, oh, what's this guy? And I began to read and I got really interested. I really started got my membership and kind of traced the case. So, that's it. Yeah. So, so you know how people are getting out of the Okay, um, I have a lot of things that I wanted to engage in the world. And I was just going to tell you that I was going to And then there was this piece of paper to be able to discuss with you. I really missed it. Why AI? Yeah, can someone share that with me? Why are you interested in data science or AI or anything like that? Why? I don't know. Take this book and This is just lighting the book so that everybody is not happy to speak in the class. Why? Uh, my name is Opo. Um, what I like AI is you know, the part that single part where you can actually you know write programs that can communicate with machines and then machines respond back to you and all of that. So 
मैंने दरख्वास्त नहीं किया थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सो यू आर वेलकम इन हिट्स यू आर डीएसएन लेट मी कमांड फॉर मैनी वे फॉर यू टू डीएसएन सो दिस इज अ टू स्पीक इज अ कॉमली टाइम मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम uh and then pockets in heat lead and then we have a night night like video so that can yeah so um, yeah so you can come you to do and then you have a night video so that can help with whatever uh, your leg injury or your leg like that So I'll be introducing it data science and data. So I have to sit down because of the people online, and I'm sorry for those people online that will not see or hear us for the past few minutes. So I'll be introducing it to what AI is, and then moving along this wonderful journey of what artificial intelligence is and what you can accomplish by it. I'll be introducing it to some of the concepts. They may look big or intimidating by now. But let me tell you, everybody that's, that 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 have big names in this field started from this place, and so don't be afraid of the of the uh, bots, words, or or the regulations that are being used. Gradually, it's a gradual journey also, and don't be intimidated by your uh, the part in which you are starting from, like your. Your level in, you are in. Just gradually, gradually over time, you begin to develop and then increase your skills. Okay. So, what is AI? You have any what is the house that can tell us what is AI? So, people online, can you can you tell us what AI is? Okay. I'm looking at the chat, so you can just put in your chat here. Okay, so what's the AI? Okay, what what's intelligence? If it is on intelligence, what what does it mean? Come on, you guys have to see us. <laughs> so what's the AI? Hmm? You want me to point it? So it's intelligence. What's intelligence? Okay, sorry, I don't know your name, so I'm calling my sister over there, my brother over there, just for now. So my sister in the job, can you tell me what intelligence is? Okay, I can see people online already dropping some chat. I'll, I'll go through them later. So what's intelligence? If they say something like a bit in form of intelligence, what do you think that means? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't want it for that thing. You, you, uh, you gave a task to to an entity, and the entity can identify the tasks and then perform that particular task efficiently. That's that's the form of intelligence. That's that's intelligence also. You can see that dogs exhibit a form of intelligence. So well-trained dogs can do some particular tasks, and they can do it effectively also. So animals exhibit some form of intelligence, and human beings, as far as we know, are the most supreme being when it comes to intelligence. But some people will argue that. So that's that. So now, when you now attach artificial intelligence to it, artificial, that's the intelligence that does not come naturally. That's what artificial intelligence means. What's what? Intelligence that does not come naturally. But that that is built in a particular machine, or that is developed or built in a particular machine. So that's what artificial intelligence is. It does not come naturally. Your computer naturally should not. It does a piece of matter. It should not be able to understand your text or read your text. Your phone should not be able to read your text or uh, identify your fingerprint or stuff like that. Just Artificial intelligence. So let me give what people are saying online. So Kelvin said artificial intelligence refers to a simulation of human intelligence in machine that are programmed to think like human and mimic human action. 
So most of the time, when a researcher is in building artificial intelligence into a machine, he's trying to allow the machine to mimic what a human can do or how a human will perform a task. Hmm? You understand how a human will perform a task. So that's that's almost of the time when a artificial intelligence engineer is trying to do mimic human intelligence in a machine. And those kind of situations have some of these jobs back in a sense. Hmm? Now if we if we make humans okay, let's say for example, now uh you've seen all these robots that box, you see, you've seen all these human they, what do they call them? Yeah, they call them human noise or something like that. They they are trying to mimic the way humans walk in a sense. That's a form of intelligence. But some of our biologists we say the way human works is not like the most effective form of uh of our, of of demonstrating how to work in a sense. Now let's say a dog hmm, is more effective than a human being when it comes to walking. Walking on a, a dog is like naturally built for it. Do you understand that? Do you agree with me? If, if we say you and the dog should not like 20 kilometers, no matter how well trained you are, there's a hypervalent hyper that the dog will have to warn you. Hmm? That dog has the kind of intelligence. But human beings are trying to build robots that look like us. Hmm? And then we we'll, we'll send that robot on the tax to, okay, take this load from location A to location B. Now, the way that robot moves, is moving like an human being, but that's not like the most effective way to move. Hmm? You understand? Now, but if you build the robot to behave like a dog, to have the resilience of a dog in a sense, there's a probability that that dog, that robot that looks like a dog, be able to at one the robot that looks like a human being. Okay, so we fact that most times they try to impute human intelligence in a machine. Now I'm telling you that then we have the jobs back in some areas. There are some areas where human intelligence supersedes that of a dog in some areas. And there are some areas where the intelligence of a dolphin or a fish supersedes that of a human in some area. So that's just another area. So let's go back. So uh, so let me read, okay. So someone also said. Marvel said AI refers to the intelligence possessed by machine as opposed to natural intelligence of animals. So every form of animals uh, has possessed a form of intelligence. And if you are very observant in your society, you are you appreciate what this intelligence is. For for an end to be able to identify and say, okay, this is an ant. I know that okay, I have to eat this ant and everything to be able to pick out ants out of grain of a sand. That is a form of intelligence. You understand? And that's one form of intelligence human beings is also trying to build. The ability for machines to be able to identify things and interact with those things. So, yes. So AI is all around us. Artificial intelligence is all around us. In your Gmail, is there. Should I give an example AI is in your Gmail? Yeah, spam. Some of you just that email gets sorted into spam and inbox. Just automatically like that. How do you think that is being achieved? Do you think that there is a human at the back end and says, okay, let me check. I did that your email. Okay, uh, no, this one looks like a spam. And then you say, okay, this one is not a spam. No, that, that is too monotonous. It's, it's, it takes a lot of time. I think I was reading somewhere, they said, Gmail gets, Abby, I think, uh, Gmail gets around like maybe 200 emails per day. That's the kind of amount of emails they have to sort per day. And you can see that they can't employ people to work at the back end and then start sorting that email. It's not possible. For those of you that, are, how many of you are involved in logistics here? Yeah. Okay, 
But if you look at Jumia, Jumia is a big company. And you know, do you know the amount of orders they have to sort through by day? For now, they are doing it mostly manually. And because of that, they have to spend more, more money employing people, more money on warehouse. And because they are employing people, and you know that human nature will definitely enter them, they have to spend another money on uh, security, making sure that the employers don't uh, uh, go away with some of the stocks in the warehouse and things like that. So these are some. For big companies like Amazon, Amazon is always in good thing. If you go to their career page, you see they're always looking for people. But because of that, they need to create a form of automation into their logistics system. And automation, most automation requires a form of intelligence. Hmm? Because no matter how well you automate, there'll be some unique cases that you didn't plan for. And if intelligence is not in beauty, automation, the automation will fail. Okay, let's say, for example, let's say I want to automate the process of booking rights. Hmm? I have a machine that automates it. So I just put the rights inside the pool and then the machine from point A automates it throughout. So the machine is always expecting that I put rights inside it. What about if the rights now has stones inside it? No, that's a use case that I didn't plan for. I didn't plan for that there will be stones in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Or I didn't plan that somebody may decide to, okay, instead of putting rice in, decide to put egg inside, uh, rice and egg, and person will see rice and egg and things like that. So if there's no form of intelligence that cater for some of those use cases, the automation will end up breaking most of the times. So that's that. So an example is found, we talked about Amazon. YouTube also is one example that uses AI. How does YouTube use AI? Can someone guess? Um, yes. Some of you just go to YouTube and like, oh, wow, these are the kind of videos I, I like watching. Okay, I like listening to Two Face music and, but you know, it, it's telling you that, okay, Two Face has released another video. How does the system know what to recommend to you? Is AI. It's not that somebody is sitting down at the back end and then sorting that, okay, today, these are what we recommend to people. Hmm? And algorithm alone cannot do that. You can't say, okay, today, this is what we recommend to people. Today, this is what to uh, allow people to, to view and see. Because people are diverse. If one person is picking the list of what to recommend to the person, the person will pick the list based on his own preference. No matter how professional and the person may be, his own human judgment would interfere with what he or she is speaking. And then they can't pick the right uh, videos for everybody, for the wide right range of people. People are diverse, what people like are diverse and things like that. And let me tell you the truth. Initially, when all these companies first started, most of these things were sorted manually with a new man at the end doing the work. For example, I know of the story of Google. When Google first started, and then they were showing, showing such results. Because, you know, Google, their first, um, what's it called? Their first uh, product was search. You type in your query, and then you bring out the results. Hmm? What they did was, they had somebody at the end, hmm? and then whenever you, you send in a query, then some will arrange the results that you will see based on how relevant the result is to your query. There was somebody doing it manually, and then they were praying someone to do it manually. Now, they can't, they can't afford to employ people now. I'm sure the number of queries they get per, per day will be going to billions. There's no, there's no amount of people they want to employ to do that. It's not possible. And again, you search in a query within one second, You've gotten the result back. No human can work that fast. Mother specialized in human beings. He or she cannot work that fast. So do you understand? So that's the reason why we need AI. Our world, customers need speed. They need good products and they need it very fast. Hello, good products and speed also. No matter how good your product is, if it's not getting to the customer, very fast, they go for someone else. 
no matter how cheap your product is, if somebody orders it on uh, online, the person expects like within 48, uh, 72 hours, I should be getting my product. That's what the person expects. In this world of digitalization, nobody is ready to wait for two weeks, three weeks. No matter how good your product is, no matter how good your cooking is, if people can't get it immediately when they need it, and things like that. So that's what AI can help with, speed, automation, and things like that. Another one, we have Google Map. So how does AI help in Google Map? Google Map now. Yeah. Okay, it tracks your location. Um, yes, it does that. Well, well, huh? yeah, geospatial is is a form, but it's not really what the AI does like fully. What I would like you to say will have been the part recommendation. How does the AI knows that okay, this is where you are, this is where you are going, and this is the best route to take to that particular place? Because it looks at traffic information, looks at where you are, look at the time of day and everything, and then decide, okay, this is the path you should take. And then it keeps recommending paths to you so as to save time. So that's one of the advantage of AI. And then we, we, we all know about the voice assistance, right? You know about Google Assistance, you know about Siri, for those of you who use iPhones or iOS devices. And then uh, Microsoft has, what do you yeah, container and things like that. So those are some of the ways AI is helping to solve some of our challenges in our situation. So can someone mention some of the other areas where AI is helping that you notice AI around you? Can someone just mention some of those areas? Okay. I'm looking at people online to so please just Drop in your chat. I'm constantly checking the chat. Okay, social media for you request. So, how, how, how do you think that works? Yeah. Yes. Uh, do you need AI for that? Wait, can, can I program it? Yes. Okay. Anyway, over time, okay. over time, I would we'll talk about a uh, word called difference between programming and and AI, artificial intelligence. But you are right, makes sense. You can build an algorithm. That utilizes that form of uh, that form of information to be able to suggest to you the friends of the kind of people you might be willing to follow, you are likely to follow, and you may not have any close relationship with them as they are suggested. They may not be friends with your friends, or in in, in, in any instance, they may just be based on what they like, what they click on. Uh, or the way uh, they operate their social media accounts, you are li likely willing to like them, and it's, and it can suggest to you that okay, this person is interested in uh, okay. Let's say for example, this person is, is interested in fish uh, fishery. He likes hunting, and he stays in this particular location. There's a high probability that you too may be interested in that, and then you might likely follow them online on social media. So that's done. Someone said data security, yes. You can use AI to identify, okay, some of the ways where your database or your data centers are vulnerable and the machine learning algorithm can help you identify and say, okay, these are some of the anomalies that, uh, these are some of the anomalies that do not occur within your data center regularly. So there's a probability that there may be a flaw in your system and things like that. Okay, someone said chatbot. 
How many of you have interacted with chatbot before? Okay. Uh, I think you be asked you. So which other chatbot do you know? And in Telegram has a chatbot. Huh? Yeah, DSM2 has a chatbot. So a chatbot, just imagine a you interact with the machine and then the machine can understand what you are saying in the chat and then give you a response appropriately and everything like that. So okay, so can someone just give me another example in the house before I move on? Online technology. Okay, uh, is it AI? Mm. Okay. Yeah, anyway, yeah, I will give that one to you. There's a form of intelligence in it. Also, yeah, there's a form of intelligence in it. Okay, so let's move on. Okay. So yeah, self-driving cars. We don't have them in the years, but <laughs> hopefully we will over time. So self-driving cars are some of the emerging technologies from artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And what do you think? Let's say, okay, let's just what do you think are some of the engines of having self-driving cars in Nigeria? What do you think are some of the engines? Out from data. Data in what sense? <laughs> yeah, data in what sense? Is he okay? Let me let me come in for you. Lack of data in, in the sense that we have not properly digitized our world. Now, if we go to uh, the United States or California, there are some there are some data you get where you have the uh, they call it. Uh, I think 3D cloud point or something of the roads and all the infrastructure that are beside the road. Maybe there's a tree somewhere, it takes note of it and everything. All those roads network are digitized. They know the length of each road. They know whether it's a uh, two lane road or one lane road. And they have enough information to know the amount of traffic and everything on that particular road. So th those uh, roads are properly to the letter digitized. And those self-driving cars come, can use those data to train the uh, the self-driving car systems, which we run. This is so. What do I use this again? Okay. Registration. Okay. Can you can you explain straight on that? Let me check the chat. Okay. I'm listening. To you. Yeah, it's true. Legislation encourage innovation, as you have said. Someone said bad good. <laughs> yeah, power. Someone said bad good. You think bad bad good affects self driving cars? Wait, wait. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? <laughs> this is it. So, uh, <laughs> let me let me go back to bad words. Can you say? Can you say a car possess artificial intelligence or its intelligence if we cannot navigate bad words? Human beings can do it. Hmm? Bad words. Can be, can be yeah. So, yeah. So the the level of intelligence of a self-driving car has not developed to the extent where it can, uh, particularly handle some cases where it has not seen before. Like bad roads. Imagine it's just like <laughs> there's a big hole in the middle of the road, and the self-driving car was not properly trained on how to navigate that. You have to move slow. And then tilt your car a little bit and the car will down very <laughs> so yes. And um, because and that's why that's one of the reasons why we are training people like you. You understand the problems Africa face. 
in the U US, an engineer is not building for bad wood. He knows that that case is solved. There's no need for me to train, to spend millions, because they spend millions of dollars training machinery models. They spend millions of dollars, and so there's no need for me to train a machinery model that can navigate bad roads entirely like that. So that, that. and again, is we don't have uh, proper markings on our roads that the self-driving cars can identify. In some cases, I've heard where there are no signs that, okay, this road is in one way, and then this may just stay at the road, we didn't scratch with that. <laughs> but, and so because we don't have those proper markings also, the self-driving cars uses those proper markings to navigate, okay, this is one way, these two lanes, okay, this one, no U-turn here, and just, so it's all those symbols it sees on the road, those are what helps that self-driving cars to navigate, and because we don't have that, so that's also one area. But, the truth is that artificial intelligence can cater for all these shortcomings. And that's why artificial, artificial intelligence is a beautiful field. You can cater for all these shortcomings, all those unique cases where you cannot manually program those unique cases inside your system. Because programming, for programming, you have to write down the instructions one by one. For AI, just look at your results, look at the outcome, and then generate the steps in order to navigate those particular unique cases. So if us in Lagos collect data and then build a self-driving car that can navigate portal, that can navigate without uh, without signs uh, or symbols, and I, I can use people experience and know that okay, policemen are always here looking for people to catch that passes on me, then the self-driving cars will know that okay. No, this is the one way I am not as fast and then navigate like that. If we can build the AI system for that, then it will work. Now, system. The issue is we are waiting for people in more advanced countries to build solutions for us, and it will work that way. Okay. Yeah. So thank you, everyone. So let's move to. Uh, yes. Yeah, so these are some of the technologies that powers AI. Don't be intimidated by them. They are simple as ABC. They are just particular languages that you have to learn. And in this class, at least we'll be able to guide you to start from the beginning. So at least for a level, so a particular stage where you can pick it up and then navigate the hostel by yourself. Be able to train to the extent that you can go on and then start learning. And if anybody asks you about AI, you can conveniently speak about it. You understand? So some of it, we have TensorFlow. So most of it, just write it down, TensorFlow. You have Python, we have introduced to Python. You have SKLearn. You have Microsoft as well. You have Nvidia and everything like that. So all these are just little by little. And so don't be bothered about the names or about how intimidating the pictures are <laughs> within uh within a couple of months you'll be able to navigate through them and answer them so these are some of the histories of artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence is not a new field at all it's just emerging based on what we have it's not a new field at all it's, it's, it's been available since 1956 and things like that and these are some of the people that sat down to coin that word and so they say it's the science and engineering of making intelligence the machine. It's just, the, just the art of building intelligence in the machine. A machine that does not have intelligence naturally, you are giving it a form of intelligence. So that's AI for you. And the other definitions, yeah, you, can, you can go on your own and then learn more about it and then learn more about other definitions and things like that. So, Artificial intelligence is broad, quite broad. And that's why no matter the field you are or your domain knowledge, you can implement AI in your field. Maybe you're a doctor, you are uh, you're a teacher, you're into teaching, you are which other field again. No matter the field you are, AI, there's a projection that AI will disrupt every field. Every field. And things like that. And then you must have a basic understanding of how AI 
is going to complement your field. If you do, it will help you to know how to prepare for it and how to take advantage of it. If you're a doctor and then you know that, okay, there's a barrier that performing operations within the next 10 or 20 years will be mostly uh, mostly uh, given to robots to do. And you're a doctor, what can you do? That can help you to okay, say, okay, how can I look into this field of robotics and see how I can uh, capitalize on this knowledge. Maybe building your own company that does it or being a specialist in how to uh, integrate robots, surgical robots into your operational room and things like that. So that can help. Imagine you're a teacher and then you know that artificial intelligence is one of the big, that would be one of the big field in the employment market. Can you go on and learn it and then teach your student about it or become a specialist in that field and when any schools want to integrate AI into their curriculum, they can say, okay, we know, uh, we know one lady that is a specialist in it that can help and design. So, so are some of this, uh, these are some, how some of this knowledge can help you in a sense. So we have machine learning, we have natural language processing. Natural, natural language processing just, it just has to do with text, human language, how AI can translate. No, AI does translation. You can see in Google, you can translate from English to Yoruba or to Ibo to Aosa. You know that, right? Yeah, so it's not that there's a human at the back end writing it out. All these are done by AI. So that's, there is speech recognition. You see some doors that you just say, uh, hello, my name is Leaky, and the door will just open for you. Maybe because program with speech recognition, you have there, you can say, okay, Google, and then your Google Assistant will prompt up. That's speech recognition also. There are some expert systems also. There's plan scheduling and optimization. That's the map we talk about. Creating routes, best route that you can go. That just planning, scheduling. There's robotics. There's vision, computer vision, and things like that. So all these fields are some of the areas. But for now, we will just be talking about AI and machine learning. Over time, you yourself will get uh, how would I put it? Then you need to pick which of the areas you like. Maybe based on uh, based on the field you like, or based on your domain expert, that's what you've learned and what you've loved. So that's it. So, no, so we are not asking that you leave your field of study or you leave the you leave the area that you like or what you like doing and then come into AI full time. No. AI is just a tool that will help you uh, perform excellently well in whatever field or career you choose to go into. There's no field on this end, and I'll give you an attendee. There's no field on this earth where, where I don't think AI will disrupt. I want you to think about it. Think about a particular field, maybe a particular job or situation where you don't think AI, there's a probability that AI will not disrupt that field. Or because of AI, there won't be like a change, a massive change in, in that particular field. Yes. So we've spoken about this. So why is AI so popular? You say AI is popular nowadays because you know I told you that AI has been uh, has been around since the 1960s, I mean 1985s. So it's quite old. But AI is popular nowadays because you have large amount of data now. All of you are always on your phone, chatting, clicking. You know, as you are clicking likes, Twitter is recording it. That is recording it on this database. Okay, how many images did this girl like today? How many tweets did this particular user like particular day? What, what are some of the uh, user preference and things like that? So there's a lot of data generated because you're always on your phone and most of everything is being digitalized. You have Netflix now. Netflix knows the kind of movies you like. They are storing the data. Facebook knows who your friends are. Uh, who their friends are and things like that. So they are storing data. So there are a lot of data compared to 1965, where 
I mean, 1960s, 1980s, where people don't even have computer systems in their homes. And most of what we do were, were offline completely. Because I remember those times when you want to submit a form or you want to apply for a job. Those olden dates, when I was still around those, those old, old times in the 1970s and the guys like that, when you want to apply for a job, you go to the company, you ask them whether they have jobs. Some of them put, uh, what's it called? Yeah, sign at the front. So people have to, go, <laughs> they have to be walking about and then looking. And then when you see, you go to the complaint, you bring your CV, you go to the complaint, submit your CV. Some of them will give you a form, you write, and everything like that. And you keep checking back and checking back to see whether you accept your note and things like that. So it was quite manual offline. But nowadays, you don't have to walk about any, you don't have to check any complaint. Just go online, search uh, MTN. Does MTN has uh, any particular job openings in the complaint? If they do, you, uh, what do you do? You apply your CV online, just click in the uh, apply button, and then everything is set, and then they can call you, you receive an email and things like that. So everything is being digitalized. And because of that, there's data. Because for, for every interaction you have online, it's being stored. And so that's, that's that. Let me check on that, maybe there's any messages. Okay, no. Yes. So we have large amount of data. Okay, so just, you can see how this cycle goes. Large volume of data because of big data, and data science we try to understand the big data because some data sets are quite large. You can have data set that are, are close to like uh, two terabytes of data. Big, you can sort through them. Hmm? If a video is two terabytes. Mm -hmm. Before you can finish watching it, maybe you spend like a year or two years to watch everything from A to Z. Because that's, because that's quite a large amount of data. So imagine if your complaint, maybe you are, the employee has the complaint, and then the complaint data set, or the, or the information the complaint have gathered over the years about their customers and potential customers are as large as two terabytes. You cannot sit down with it and start checking it one after the other to see whether customer A would, uh, would like to buy a bag or a shoe. You can't you can, you can spend that long on it. It's too, that's too big. So then we have to use data science to help us to get meaning from that data and then deliver insight and pattern from, big, from, from the big data using data science. And that's a form of artificial intelligence also because data science is a subset of artificial intelligence. So, so that's that. Okay, so we want to take a look at how far mm -hmm. go. I'll be playing a video for you now. I want you guys to watch and learn. So how many of you have heard of AlphaGo? Okay, yeah. So that will make it more interesting because we don't know about AlphaGo yet. So learn and then listen. <laughs>
So let me just summarize that. So alpha good, there's a uh, there's a game called go, and it's quite it's a very complex game. It's not like chess, but more complex than chess. You even know chess, right? That is more complex than chess, and then it's so complex that uh, the number of moves you can make on that particular board. Is more than the number of atoms in the universe. You know how small atoms are? And then the number of moves you can make on that board is more than the number of atoms that there are in the universe. So, quite, you can't exhaust the number of moves you can make on that game. Now, this company, DeepMind, decided to build an artificial intelligence model that can play the game. Not just play the game, but can, that can beat the world experts in the game. So that uh, model called AlphaGo beats the world experts in that game. So that's a big, big accomplishment. That's the probability that in the next year, some of the artificial intelligence systems that we've seen will be quite very complex. And we'll be able to interact with human at the same level, be able to perform excellently well in what human does. And so that's that's a big, big accomplishment. So do you have any questions so far? Any question? Let me check online. <laughs> okay, people are saying they can't hear the video. No, we will share the link in that. I don't know what will have cost that. We will share the link with that. We will share the link of the video online. We will share one of my colleagues do that very soon. We will share the video. So, now, you will hear me use the word artificial intelligence, machine learning, and everything. So, what's the difference? Hmm? So I'll be, I'll be, uh, yeah, just, and I'll be uh, walking you towards the difference between machine learning and artificial intelligence. So if I'm saying machine learning, machine learning is just a subset of artificial intelligence. So don't, it's just a subset, a small part of it. So because I told you AI is broad, it's big, but to start with you guys, you are going to start with a small part, and then we will drill down and then once you understand how that small aspects work, be able to uh, generalize it in other aspects of AI, and you'll be able to learn what you need to learn. So machine learning, uh, it does not mean that <laughs> machines, <laughs> and just because of kind of machines, right? It does not mean that machines are learning. It means machine, the computer system, something with circuits and board are learning. So it's just a subset. So machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence which provide machines the ability to learn automatically and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed. So they learn from experience. So that's what machine learning does. It learns from experience. So to build a machine learning model, you have to have previous data. Previous data. So it must, you must have been able to accomplish that task in the past. Okay, let's say for example, for example, I want to uh, teach a machine learning algorithm on how to cook, how to cook rice. I don't know how to mention rice. How to cook rice in particular. Now, for my artificial intelligence, for my machine learning model to be able to learn how to cook rice, I was giving it different examples of how to cook rice, different ways of how to cook rice. Maybe you put the rice first and then you pour water and then you put salt and then you close it. Or some people some people will decide to wash the rice, then put the rice, and then put water, and then uh, then after 20 minutes put salt, and then that's another example. And someone can decide to wash the rice, put the rice, 
put a little bit of oil and put some pepper and everything. So that's another way of cooking rice. So what's my machine learning model sees all those previous examples of ways people have cooked it. Maybe I showed it videos online on how to cook rice. I'm sure by the time you go on YouTube and search how to cook rice, you see different examples. Maybe you show it, you show it different examples and then from there to be able to learn as okay. And then you give it to guys and say, okay, cook this rice for me. And to be able to learn and then cook rice using those previous examples that I've seen. So that's that's what uh machine learning does. Do you have any questions? Or are you having difficulty understanding? Let me know. Online people online, do you have questions? It's all the same difference between data analysts and data science. Okay, now we'll talk about that later. Please explain the machine learning again. So, machine learning is when your system, your artificial intelligence system, learn using previous examples, learn based on experience. It's learning based on experience, past data, past experience to be able to predict what to do in the future. For example, let's say you want to forecast the amount of rain that will fall in Lagos in March. You don't just wake up and say, okay, ah, I think this March, the number of rains that will fall be like uh, 20 cm or 20, uh, whatever units you put, and they just decide, no, that's not the way they do it. What do they do? They look at past data, okay, in March, what was the amount of rainfall that we have in the month of March? They look, they can look as far back as the past 20 years or 100 years, and then with that, they'll be able to predict, uh, okay, this next year, March, the amount of rainfall that will fall will be 20 or 30, based on past previous data that they look at. Hmm? And that's the same thing that your machine learning model does. You understand? It looks at past data from previous years or prevent previous time stamp and then be able to predict that, okay, based on this past data that I've seen, this is my prediction. Let me give you another example. Let's say you want to be able to predict, I don't know if you know about uh, carbon. There's an app called Carbon. You know it of Carbon before? Okay. A, a company in Nigeria called Carbon. You know about Carbon, Nami? For? No, 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 no. Yeah, for loan, yeah. Carbon gives loan. So you can go on the, on the, on the app and then you apply for loan and then it gives you a particular amount of loan. Now, so adults, now, there's no, there's no uh, person at the back end sitting now and say, okay, this is the loan we would approve for this person or not. There might be someone at the back end, maybe monitoring the system uh, at the very start, just like the way Google started. Over time, as their customer base increase, they, uh, they will have to completely automate it and leave it to an algorithm to decide how much loan you will receive. So, okay, I'm having a problem with the screen here. Yeah. yeah, so, this is the girl. We are back. Hello, guys. Can you help me look at this screen and figure out what the issue So, an artificial intelligence system has to look at it and then. Uh, figure out how much load it will give. But for it to be able to identify the amount of load it will give, it has to look at, number one, your bank statement, your previous financial records, and also look at people that are similar to you, in a sense, that you are in the same bracket with. Let's say, for example, the software engineer, and then the machine learning model might have learned over time that, okay, this is the salary scale, that software engineer collects, and this is uh, this is these are some of the habits they involve with over time, 
And then with that, you can okay, say, okay, based on this person's salary scale and based on the past uh, information, based on the past information we, we have about this person, this is how much this person will be con will be able to conveniently pay back. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So there's a so that's what yeah, so that's what yeah, so that's what machine learning is about. So so what's that difference between machine learning and traditional uh, and, and programming you said because some of you might not be familiar with programming. So we are introducing you to Python program. Python is a beautiful language, and I'm sure you guys love it because I do, and I'm sure you will as an absolutely absolutely love it. So what's the difference between program? So to program a machine, you have to tell it instructions step by step what it should do. It should not deviate from that steps that you're giving it to it. Okay, let's say for example, I want to I want to program a car to be able to move from here to a large image. How many of you know where a large image is? Yeah, we are in a large image, right? Now, but I want it to move from here to that junction. I want to program it to move from here to that junction. What I will write in the program is I write start the car. Hmm? Start the car on the engine. Check that the engine is working properly. Check that you have that your oil is proper and everything. Do the initial checks. When those checks are okay, I'll give it a what a tick. Then move to the next step. Move straight forward for the next 20 meters. To go straight 20 meters. If you count it, once it's 20 meters, okay, stay. Turn left. You turn left. Move for another 40 meter. It's move 40 meter. You got it to your destination. Um, that is the program. Now, it doesn't matter where your where your car is. If you like, let me go and put the car in motion. Once I just spawn the car like the turn, you follow the instruction. Do the initial checks. Move 20 meters. Whether it's a wall, that is a front. Or is a human being that is staying in front, or is a chicken or anything, he's moving 20 meters forward. Oh, you have to keep moving until he has got it to 20 meters. Once you get to 20 meters, turn left. It does not matter whether it's someone's pad or sitting right, you just turn left. Move, move another 40 meters. I've got it to my location. That's what programming is. You give it instructions, it does not deviate from your instructions. Does not use uh, common sense or anything. Give it instructions. It follows instructions to the letter. That's what programming is. Now, but for machine learning, machine learning, you don't give it instructions. What you give it is you give it data and past results, past experience. How you been doing it before? Now, if I want to build a machine learning model that drives from here to Algorithm. I won't give it instruction. What I'll give it is examples of way, way in which people drive from the location to a language. Maybe I'll put a camera showing how someone is driving from his location to a language. Maybe I'll put uh, a map, maybe a bed IP about someone moves from a particular point, a person avoids traffic, navigate. And different routes in which someone can pass from here to a large image. And then from there, once I start up my system, it looks at where the, where the car is, look at the past experience, the way people drive, and then be able to learn and navigate and then get to a large image. So that's, that's different. So for traditional program, you give it data and the program. The program is the instructions. That you want it to do. It, that's what you have to do. Now. The instructions. You give it data, the instructions, and then it will give you a result. But for machine learning, machine learning you give it the data and then the results. That's the past experience, what people have done before to achieve that particular task. 
and then it will now generate a, a program that's a model that can solve that particular tax for you. That's what it will do. You generate a model that can solve that particular tax for you. But that model is not constrained to a particular way of solving it. You understand? It's not constrained to a particular way. All the goal of the model is to solve the tax. How the model solves the tax is not consigned. It's not a consign, but anyway, later it might be. How the model solves the tax might not be the consign that you are interested in. It's just that the model can solve that particular tax. Now, the, the places where machine learning thrives is that there are some places where you cannot explicitly write the program for it, write the set of instructions for it, because things don't go according to plan. Let's say, for example, you want to build a robot that can operate on a human being. You cannot explicitly write a program, either a JavaScript, a Python program, to operate on a human being. Because human beings are unique. And in a operation room, what the doctor will tell you that there's a problem that things will not go according to plan. And they are probably that things might not go according to plan. You might be thinking that, okay, you just want to operate, you just want to remove uh, maybe a bullet in this person, and then you may find something else that you, that you need to tackle in a sense. And if you've written the set of instructions about to remove a bullet from the human body, and then some other cases arise that you are not planning for or that you didn't foresee, how do you navigate this kind of situation? So that's so those are some of the ways in which machine learning is uh, better than traditional programming. But there are some places where you don't you don't need to perform traditional programming. You don't you don't need to write out the set of instructions one by one. Having so there are some places where you don't need machine learning because the task requires simple, very simple and straightforward. Let's say for example, you want to write a uh, a program that takes two numbers and then multiply them together and then give a result. You don't have to build a machine learning model for that. It's quite simple. They teach you to primary school children. If you want to multiply, do two times four. You have your time table, time uh, time table, and then you check it and then you get your results. So those ones are quite simple. So programming it manually will work fine. You don't have to build a machine learning model for it. But there are some areas where the situation are quite unique, peculiar, and to manually program it might not be to the best of advantage. You understand? Yes. So you have questions for me? You have questions for me? Let me check the online. Hello, guys. You have questions. It, but, so do you understand all what I'm talking about? You do. Okay, so what's machine learning? Can someone tell me what machine learning is? Okay, wait, wait, I need someone else. So I, I just need someone else. Someone that has not spoken before. So who have not spoken? I know the guy on the cow, Nike cow, has not spoken. I know the lady beside her looking as if she's seriously praying to her God, have not spoken. I know that the lady in white also have not spoken. So you guys should do a vote and then pick one person among you guys. Okay, they are pointing to the guy in cap. So, hello, can you just tell us, tell us your name and then tell us what machine learning is? Okay, Daniel. Yeah, so we give machines what to do based on past experience. Someone says, Danny said machine learning will impute large data and the framework and the system will be will be the one to work on the data. Yes, that's that's quite right. Someone said the subset of AI 
which is also like that gives machines the ability to make decision based on the data even. So hope you guys are excited about machine learning. Hope I'm not scared you guys away. And please oh, don't don't run away. It's, you know, it's a very interesting field. Very, very interesting field. Okay. So there is deep learning also. <laughs> so deep learning is not that you are uh, learning inside the deep ocean or inside the swimming pool or something like that. It's just a form of, it's also a subset of machine learning. So you can see that we have artificial intelligence, we have machine learning, and then we have deep learning also. So deep learning is also a form of artificial intelligence. Uh, of, yeah, a subset of machine learning, which is also a subset of artificial intelligence also. So for now, for this class, we won't be talking much about deep learning, but as over time, as it progresses, maybe we'll have another class where we we'll talk about deep learning. Once you are done with this class, and you guys are already familiar with the concept of machine learning and how to build machine learning system. So um, we've, we've spoken about a lot of things, we've spoken about artificial intelligence, we've spoken about machine learning, and also data science. So you see a job, most of the job you see are uh, data analysts, they are looking for data analysts, they are looking for data science, uh, data scientists. Which other job do you see? You guys see online? Data engineer, which other one? Machine learning engineer and the rest like that. So most, mostly in Nigeria, the MLOs, yeah. Mostly in Nigeria, the kind of job you see for now, you, you would mostly see data <coughs> analysts or data visualization experts, or yeah, but mostly data analysts or uh, data engineer or things like that. So, so data analysts, with data analysts, what you are doing mostly is taking in data and uh, getting meaning from it. But who you are presenting is most of the jobs. The difference between them are quite small. For a data analyst, what a data analyst is doing is you are taking in the company's data and then you are presenting it to stakeholders, your CEO, because he wants to know that, okay, based on this data we'll be collecting and this data I've been spending so much on to keep it on the cloud or maybe on a data storage on the cloud, what are the informations? What are, what are the customers telling us? Hmm? Because if the CEO does not know that the customers are complaining about the particular service, he or she will not be able to fix that particular service or create a better alternative. Hmm? And customers complain. It's not about them writing reviews. They complain in one way or the other because they may go, they may, they may be browsing online and then see that particular product, and then just because of that particular product, they just close the tab. They're no longer on your site and everything like that. So your customers, your CEO wants to know that okay, where are the cost where are our customers spending most of the time? Imagine the customer may be spending a lot of time on a particular page. Let's say you you start up that sells bags, shoes, and clothes, and then customers are spending most of the time on, on a particular session, maybe a particular bag. They are spending a lot of time, but they are not buying. You still want to know why. Why are they not buying? And then that's when you employ data analysts, which are you guys, and tell, okay, tell us why they are not buying these bags. And then you go in, speak with your data engineer. Let's say for a startup, they don't have a data engineer, so you are the one that gets the data and then makes sense of it. Is it because of the price? Is it that you just like the bag? People are saying, wow, come and check out this bag. But we are not buying it because of the price and everything. Or is it because of the uh, the, the number of days you to take uh, you to take it to deliver it? Is that what scare people away? Or or is it because you are asking them to pay online? Is that some of the reason why? And some of the things like that. So mm -hmm. those are some of the things your CEO wants to know. And how you were able to achieve that? Your CEO does not care. He does not care whether I use Python or you 
you manage your gun and calculate it by hand and you sit down you're looking at that same number so just present your data to me present accurate results to me and let me make uh business decisions so those are what data analysis does and another example might be that okay i can see a comment online let me check Why this mouse? Okay. okay. Yeah. So another example might be that let's say okay, let's say you work in an insurance company and then you 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 created an insurance scheme or an insurance product and your CEO wants to know that who are the people buying this product? Are they students? Are they working class? What is the particular sector of people that are mostly interested in that product? Because if they know the particular sector that that product leads to, they'll be able to advertise for that particular sector. They'll be able to know where to spend their money. Should they spend it on online advertisement because that's where the youths are? Or they have to go job door after door because that's where mostly the uh, senior citizens are that's the old people they have to go knocking door by door and things like that what part class segment is interested and if they know the part class segment is interested they'll be able to know the part class segment that are not interested and be able to create another scheme or another product that speak to that particular segment so those are the work of a data analyst also a Data scientists, for a data scientist, may be asked to, apart from doing data visualization and presenting results from data, may be asked to build models that make prediction to predict if a customer will buy a product or not, hmm? or to predict if a customer will leave your business or not. Like now, you may decide to know that, okay, what's the probability that this, this particular customer that will not be using our I have not been calling on Glow for like two days. We use, we will go and buy MTNC. And if they know that, okay, we did the next one month, so there's more that this customer will go and buy an MTNC. What do you think Glow will do? Does that give him promotion? Are we? They buy 100 naira credit, get 500. Ah, customer was like, oh, these people are good though. They care about the milk. <laughs> they don't really care about it. What they are looking at, they are looking at your data, your past experience and then they are saying okay this customer is no longer is no longer engaging with us like he used to and there's a probability that this customer is about to leave our business so what can we do to make sure that that particular customer stays so that's uh so that's so you build prediction also say so machine so for machine learning engineer they are mostly interested in for machine learning engineer you you hardly communicate with the stakeholders. You don't have any interaction with whether the customer or your CEO. Mostly you are the back end. You are more like a software engineer that does building machine learning, putting in the pipeline, is making predictions, and then you are correcting the errors and things like that. You are not doing visualization for anybody or explanation for anybody. So those are some of the subset so are there any questions are there some jobs you've seen online and you're wondering what they do or is there any particular area you're interested in and you're wondering if that particular area is available in uh, artificial intelligence in AI in particular hmm? no question so you guys please next class search online do questions those those are what you engage your curiosity big questions look online look at some of the jobs look at some of the specifications they're asking for you know what you would do go online no matter the company maybe it's facebook or google maybe the company is like nigeria or not go and read the job description learn some of the skills they're asking for and then maybe by next class you now come here and ask me okay this is class skill how do we get it where do i look for it what are some of the things i need to do to acquire it Maybe I'll be able to know, okay, maybe this class is not for you. Maybe you have to go to, because we have one class called business analytics. In business analytics. Maybe you have to go for business analytics. Or maybe after this class, these are some of these courses you have to take. Or these are some of the steps you have to take. Or these are some of the projects you have to do. Because it will help. 
Because the aim of this class is not just for you to learn AI and just put it in your pocket, it's to do something with it, maybe create your own business, start a project, get a new job, or get or move to another field entirely. Okay, I have two people raising hands here. So if you have questions, so somebody is asking what's the difference between a business analyst and a data analyst. The differences are quite small. Business analysts will focus more on the business side of things, less on the data side of things. Maybe how can a business improve? The business analyst can use data to make his own suggestion on how a business can improve. But a business analyst is more, more like a salesperson, like a business person, and less of a data person or a software person or things like that. So business analysts, they do visualization too. Some of them, in some companies, said they will do the same job. It's just that the names are different also. So someone is asking, where does, let me see. That's his only questions again. Okay. Okay, someone is asking, please, are there any instructions for the next class? Okay, so for the next class, uh, next class is same time, same uh, same place. So that's for next class. Oh, that's not cut on night. I don't know who that person, what that person is talking about. Are there any cartons? Okay, someone is also asking, where does machine learning meet back end? But these are people that are maybe familiar with software engineering already. So back end is what happened at the end, <laughs> at the uh, on the server stage of your system. Front end are some of the things you see. Maybe even you can open the app and then you can interact with some of the places on the data called front end. Back end is what makes those front end functions. So your machine learning model will mostly sit at the back end. Right? Because that's where interaction is going on. It's to sit at the back end and then manipulate the outcomes of what you see on the front end. So, okay, yeah. So, hmm? so option now AI. So artificial intelligence, we had different time, artificial narrow intelligence. So these are products that perform on tasks. There's one there called general intelligence. It's something that they are still trying to build. It's an AI system that can handle every scenario. Maybe it tells you to cook, it can cook, sweep, it can sweep, uh, build the house, to be able to build the house, it can do everything. But there are some intelligence that are very narrow. What they can only do is they can only classify whether a system is what is spam or not, and things like that. Well, hello guys. Wait, can you make sure that the uh, what's called the uh, marker on the zoom is off because I can see some lines here. You understand what I'm talking about? Okay. And then there is artificial super intelligence. You can perform tasks that human beings cannot. So for now, most of the tasks we see, uh, or most of the artificial intelligence we see are what we call the narrow ones. They can only perform one task. If researchers, companies are still building the general intelligence, and the super intelligence is just for now is is not even in view. And things like that. So uh, that's like the end of today's class. So do you have like any questions? Questions, questions, questions. Come on, guys, you guys should have questions now. Let me check online. So yeah, the recording will be given to you guys. Today's recording will be given to you guys. Will there be class tomorrow? Class would occur next week. 
for now, you guys will have access to the Google Classroom. In the Google Classroom, we're giving you extra materials on what we've spoken about. We're giving you videos, and we'll be giving you quiz also. It's just like a classroom. You will learn at your own pace, watch some videos, do some quiz, answer some questions, and then you'll be able to interact with your colleagues also. And then next week, we'll continue using post of view. Next month. Okay, tomorrow, Abby. Next tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. Okay, so tomorrow we'll continue also using uh, using some of the things we learn and things like that. So someone is asking, what is programming language? Programming language are language that your computer understands. We'll be teaching Python. Python is an example of programming language. You're able to pass instructions to your system, and your system will be able to understand and then act on that instruction. You understand? Okay. So your assignment will be, I've given you one, one assignment. Number one, go and search some of the jobs you like. Look at some of the key requirements, collate them, and then next class you can ask us how you can go about getting the skills and what are things you need to know. And then some of the assignments will be given your Google, your, uh, Google Classroom. That's where you'll be able to get your assignments, your videos, what you need to do, how you need to go about it, some of the quiz questions, and things like that. So is asking, will this class cover data analysis in research and academy? We'll be teaching data analysis, analysis uh, data analysis, like in general. But if you have any questions that can help, maybe in that particular field, you can um, let us know. Yeah, you'll be having your materials online. Yeah, there'll be a record of information. Okay, someone is asking here. He said, you talked about situations where you can't explicitly write what the machine learning should do. Do you mean that machine, the machine figures it out on its own? You know, I gave an example where there are some places where you can tell the machine, give it specific instructions on how to do about it. Why machine learning, it just learn from past experience, and then the machine figures it out, how to perform the task based on past experience. Yeah, so the machine figures it out on the own. So now, asks if I don't study computer science in school, do I, can I be a data analyst or a data scientist even without any prior knowledge of program? Yes. You can be a data analyst, you can be a data uh, program, uh, data scientist, you can even be a data engineer. All what you have to do is, uh, Cover for areas where you are not taught, and then develop yourself in those areas. Look at your job. That's what I'm saying. Go online and check some of the job specification. Look at the skills you have. Look at the skills you don't have, and then you'll be able to know where the gaps are and develop yourself. But no, no complaint, no serious complaint will make it the requirement that you must have. A computer science degree, no, but most of them require that you have a bachelor degree or you have a form of education, or nobody will specifically require that it must be a computer science degree. Like, like you said, my proof, I don't have a computer science degree. Yeah. Okay, so data scientists build the model, they'll build machine learning model. Data engineer focus on how uh, how a company can collect data from uh, what's called from the customers. Hmm? In a sense, because they do more with data collection, processing those data and storing them. Hmm? So when a data scientist now wants to build this model, you ask the data engineer, give me the data set or the data available that the company has about our customers and then data engineer gives data scientists the data 
then the data scientists will build the model and then put them in production or make uh art form out of it or if they don't have a data scientist and maybe just a data analyst that wants to visualize something else as a data engineer give me the data set that our company has and then from there visualize and everything like that you understand so a data engineer is mostly concerned about how do we collect data from the customers how do we store it because there are some data that are very sensitive maybe for, for example uh let's say based on our content maybe bank statement of the customer and everything like that how do we store it are there some regulations that are required when storing some sensitive data there are some countries that are well planned that they will tell you that you can't store a customer data uh more than six months and things like that there are some countries where they, they will ask that before you can store this customer data you must ask for approval and things like that and there are some countries where they realize that you cannot store the citizen data outside of the country. Hmm? So let's say you have a data warehouse, we call it data warehouse or data center that is in US. There are some companies, there are some uh, legislation that will say, okay, you cannot store that that customer's uh, data because the citizen of Nigeria you cannot store it in the US. You want that data to be stored in Nigeria. So that's what some of the things that data engineer takes care of. So is asking how long does it take to become a professional for a professional data scientist? <laughs> so it's there's no time frame for it. But Let's say, like the minimum it would take for you to be able to okay, confidently say, okay, I can apply for a job and I know my own news. Let's say you are studying regularly. I would say maybe two months, three months. You can confidently say, okay, I can apply for an internship role and try to get experience, real life experience in the field. Two, three months, if you are very serious with it. And then over time, the more you interact with it, within two to three years, you are comfortable and then you can speak anywhere. And then over time, the experience builds up and you, you get experience as you go and then you specialize also in some particular areas when you become an expert in that particular field. In that particular field. Hello, guys. Yeah, let me confirm. Yeah, you can run. So any other questions before we go? Have you guys seen the attendance? Okay. So if there are no questions. So is asking what's the, what's the relationship between an et ethical actor? What's the relevance of data science, data data analysis in my field? Or machine learning or artificial intelligence. Okay, I, I don't know much about ethical hackers or ethical hacking. But all I do know is that there are machine learning models that predict or that detect anomalies in your uh, in your in your network. When I mean anomalies, it, it might mean that someone trying to hack your system on this side. There are some machine learning models that track your your traffic that tracks your traffic and then can tell you that okay this particular incoming uh network or request is an act in a sense and then they'll be able to it will be able to trigger the system and then you can get notified so so that's one aspect i am familiar with okay so thank you everyone thank you thank you thank you thank you so we come to the end so uh more information. So get this start. Make sure that you've gotten the email. If you've not gotten the email, speak with some of our gentlemen at the back. They would help you and make sure that you are getting email from us and we'll be able to tell you when the next class is. Uh, and then we'll be able to introduce you to Google Classroom. So have a wonderful day and see you same time. Uh the same next tomorrow. Yeah. See you same time. Tomorrow. Yeah. See you, see you same time tomorrow.
and have a wonderful time ahead. So buy everyone online. And Shah, I'm not able to answer most of your questions, so thanks once more. Bye bye bye.